Okay, welcome back, EENG 460, and um, last time we talked about printing a string to the console, so today I'm going to talk about printing an integer, and the integer is going to be contained in a register, so effectively we're printing the contents of a register to the console. Alright, so I've got a program here, let's um, reinitialize and load file, and the one I want to talk about is print integer. Okay. Now here's the code loaded in here, but let's actually bring the uh, the Notepad document over here and take a look at it. Okay. So if we look at this guy, we have our usual stuff, right? There's a bunch of comments right here. Um, okay, so it's a uh, syscall print integer dot s is the name of the file. It demonstrates how to print out an integer to the console. Then uh, the next thing is my data section. Okay, that doesn't really uh, isn't really key here, but uh, nonetheless, I do have a title. The title is printing an int to the console. I've got CR, which is my carriage return, because I might want to skip to the next line. And then my normal termination message. I always like printing that out just because it lets me know that my program's you know, not off in la-la land. It actually terminated normally, the way I wanted it to. Okay, well then, the next thing is the uh, text section. All right, so here you've got the text section. All right, let's go look at that. Well, um, we keep um, declaring using this preprocessor directive global to declare the label my main. And we haven't really used that, but I, I keep putting it in there because, you know, later we will. And the idea on that one is it's a global label that if your project consists of multiple .s files, um, all of them can see that label my main. All right, so a little bit later on, but it's a good thing to put in there to identify the beginning of your main. And let's see, this guy right here, you know, it just uses what we learned in the previous video to print out the title. The title is printing int to console. Now, here we use our old friend load immediate, which is, again, a pseudo command. And because the quantity here is less than 16 bits, that'll just get um, converted to an or immediate. If it was 32 bits, well, then we'd have to break that 32 bits into six, two 16 bits and do an or immediate with also a load upper immediate to get those bits in the upper 16 bits. But here we just have our load immediate that will get converted to an or. And I've put 1, 2, 3, 4 into the S0 register. Well, this is the magic code right here that does what we want to do. This actually prints out an integer. And the way um, it works is we load V0 with 1, and then we call syscall. Okay? Now, you remember, when we loaded V0 with 4 and called syscall, that's telling us to print out um, a string. What string? Well, the string whose address is um, in A0. Well, down here it's similar, but now we load V0 with 1. V0 is kind of the control register. Syscall looks at that and says, oh, it's a 1, so you want to print out an integer. Well, what integer do you want to print out? You want to print out the integer that's in A0. So after I loaded S0 with 1, 2, 3, 4, I have to move the contents of S0 to A0. And there you go. You set up V0 equal to 1, tells it to print int. What int? Well, you have to take the integer that you want to print, move it into the A0, and then you want to invoke syscall. So it's kind of similar to printing out a string, isn't it? But here we use V04 to tell it a string. And then A0 is kind of like our input argument to this function syscall. Uh, when we print a string, A0 is the address of the string we want to print out. But down here, when we print an integer, A0 actually contains the value of the integer we want to print out. Okay? So this is the magic. This is how you do it, how to print an integer to the console. And then, of course, I have my normal termination, and then I basically terminate it. And notice down here on this guy, this is real similar too. Here I'm loading V0 with 10, and then I'm calling syscall. So syscall always looks at V0 to figure out what it should do. Um, 10 tells it to terminate, 4 tells it to print out a string, and 1 tells it to print out an integer. Okay, let's go ahead and step through this program and uh, see what happens. I've loaded it here. If I hit F10, okay, first thing I did is I put 4 into V0. And you can go check your registers to make sure 4 is there. Yep, 4 is there. Let's go back to text. Okay. And then if I hit F10 again, I am going to load the address of title into A0 and call syscall. All right, well, the minute I call syscall, I print it out to my console, and I print it out my title. Print into console. Okay, if I keep hitting F10, I'm going to do a load immediate on 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, it takes that load immediate, converts it to an OR immediate, and then um, uh, 
puts 1, 2, 3, 4 into the S0 register. Now I'm going to put 1 into the V0 register, again using a load immediate, which can, again, load immediate is pseudo. It's going to convert it to OR immediate. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move S0 to A0. Okay. Well, notice, it uh, looks like move also gets this kind of a pseudo command, and it gets converted to an add unsigned. So I'm going to take the contents of 16, which is S0, I'm going to add 0 to it and leave the results in 4, which is A0. So yeah, so you're just basically adding 0 to a register and storing it somewhere else. That's what a move basically does. Move is also a pseudo command, and it gets translated to an add unsigned. Okay. Then uh, we don't want any signed bits messing things up. All right, so then when I call sys call, I'm getting ready to do it. I've set up V0 with 1. I've moved what I want to print out, S0, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, to the A0. And now I'm going to call sys call. So if you notice in the console window, we just printed out the contents of A0, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. And then now I've got load immediate V04. All right, so what we're going to do there is just set up to print a string. What string are we going to print? Normal termination string. Okay. And then um, the address of this guy was, again, a 32-bit quantity. So we had to do it with two commands because we have to break that 32-bit up into 16 bits because the immediate field is only 16 bits wide. And then when I do uh, sys call, I print out normal termination. And then I can keep coming along here, and my program is done. But notice down here, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I have normal termination. I should have printed out a carriage return between the integer and normal termination. Because it, it's kind of messy to read. Well, let's uh, figure that out. Let's go back and look at our program, and how can we do that? Well, this is the code right here that prints it out. And then I print out normal termination. Well, what I'd literally like to do is print out a carriage return there. So let's move right into here between these two guys where we print the integer and we print normal termination. Okay, now I don't want to print normal termination. I want to print CR. So now you kind of see why I have this CR up here defined to be a backslash n. So now we'll print CR, okay, which will now, if I run it, should print out the contents of S0 and then uh, have a little space. So let's reinitialize, load, and um, let's say print integer. And let's say we'll just step through this with F10. Okay, printing it to the console. Now here I'm actually going to print out the integer when I do syscall. Okay, there's one, two, three, four. Now when I do this syscall right here, I'm going to do a carriage return, but you don't really see anything in the console because it's a carriage return. But now I'm going to print out normal termination when I F10 over syscall, I should get my normal termination message, and I do. Suppose I wanted two spaces between my 1, 2, 3, 4 and normal termination. Can you do that? Sure you can. Go back to your code, and um, let's see. Notice this is where we do the carriage return, right? I load up V0, I load up A0, but notice this syscall didn't really change the contents of V0 and A0, so I could actually just put a couple more syscalls in there because I've set up the uh, parameters that syscall is going to look at to figure out what to do. And now it should do three carriage returns. Let's save that guy. And uh, what we'll do is we will run this guy. And um, let's uh, reinitialize load file. Did I do that already? I can't remember. OK. And now I'll just run it. And I ran it full bore this time by clicking on the play button instead of stepping through with F10. And there you go. We had one, two, and three carriage returns down here. All right? So that takes the contents of a register and prints it to a console. Okay. Thanks for watching. See you next time.